Welcome to part 2 of Stellaris Abridged using the Birch World quote unquote challenge. So last time we started this challenge where we can only have one planet but it's a Birch World from the very beginning. This proved to be not particularly challenging and we're certainly keeping up with the other empires and perhaps even beating them right now. Plus all the other empires were kind of nice, they're all chill, nobody wants to kill us as far as I can tell. So we're just kind of sitting here gradually taking over more and more territory, doing more and more exploration with our scientists, and gathering resources ready to start some mega structural engineering. Here's a look at the map in general as we know it. There is this strange, gigantic planet out here on the galaxy map. And I had to wonder, is this like a feature of the mod? Is that actually a thing? Like a huge uh, mega planet that's going to do something? Or is it a glitch? I'm pretty sure it's actually a glitch. Here's where we're supposed to start, the Birch World start. Originally spawns you in a system and then instantly teleports you to the center of the galaxy. So that was our old home system over there, the locket. Anyway, hopefully we're not going to be killed by a gigantic mega brown dwarf or something that's going to come out of nowhere and envelop the galaxy. But something will eventually envelop the galaxy and that's the point of this campaign. We are preparing for four simultaneous endgame crises where we will eventually try to save the universe. We're doing this event chain right now, which I believe is unique to the Gigastructural Engineering mod, the main mod that I'm using. It's essentially a thing where you have to send a bunch of scientists to go die in a black hole. The eventual result is it allows you to unlock a certain megastructure called the Event Horizon Offset Facility, or something like that, which is a special megastructure that I didn't get to use in my previous campaign, so I was interested to go for this. It's essentially a big teleporter. We'll see it later on. We're also working on other megastructures. I'm saving up the influence to make a stellar particle accelerator, a megastructure that boosts shields and physics research. There's the event horizon thing, so we need lots of resources to build that, but we can attach it to a black hole to have some mysterious effects. We'll see them later on. We get the first hints that somebody doesn't like us. It's the Uvas of our new bloodborne, the other bird species. We're the same species as them, but they're the evil version. Luckily for us, they're many players away from us. There are several factions that have to get through to attack us. So we're kind of fine. They can insult us all they like, and not much came of that. We've got some refugees from some other war going on around the galaxy, so that's great. The more people we can shove into this birch world, the better, because we need at least 100 people to unlock the ability to build any districts. We're currently gaining population at an abnormal rate, thanks to us stealing citizens from other places with immigration, and we can boost that even more using this distribute luxury goods decision. So now the Birch World has tons of free housing, loads of available jobs, you get some free luxuries if you move in, lots of other people from around the galaxy will be coming to our Birch World, which is absolutely perfect. We're too rich, our wallets are literally overflowing right now, so we have to constantly sell things to get them off our hands. It's all looking good, although we have now reached the capacity of the Birch World for making regular buildings. This means we can't make any more things like research labs, or the admin centers, which will limit our growth severely unless we can do something about that. And there are going to be things we can do about that. Here was the nearest thing that happened to some action. A whole bunch of the space amoebas came over to attack one of my stations. Luckily, it happened to be a station that I had been upgrading. So it has some weapons and some combat potential there. And we end up just about winning this little fight in the end. So there we go. The space amoebas got their revenge. For the fact I was going around in the last part just killing them all over the galaxy for no good reason to get experience points. Now moving on, we get news that this Offset Horizon thing has been constructed by the Sustainability Initiative of all people. So that's pretty cheeky of them. You can see it here in their system. It's a giant thing attached to a black hole. Pretty dangerous looking. This is the alpha version. You can get upgraded versions later on. So they'll be able to use that to teleport around, including to teleport outside of the galaxy. We won't really see much of that until I build one myself and have a go with it, which will be coming soon. In the meantime, I'm working on making a federation because I want to create an alliance of powers ready to fight this big endgame crisis cluster that's going to come at us. So our new federation is called Let's Save the Galaxy and the first member are the Hydras to our north. 
nice to have them as allies in the short term and in the long term. If we can get our federation to maximum level, you get a bonus against endgame crisis units, since you're supposed to be the guardians of the galaxy and whatnot. We also got a third power entering the Federation for free. I couldn't find them at first. It's just a one system power, a vassal of the Hydras somewhere at the top of the map. Nothing too special. Now we discover in one of the systems I randomly claimed, it's got an abandoned orchard complex. That's pretty handy because right now our economy is barely producing any food. Virtually all of our food is being bought off the market, but this megastructure can produce food. So once we have the tech that allows us to understand this thing, we can very rapidly rebuild the ruined version of it and make our economy look a bit better. So we'll just look forward to that, I guess. We've also now completed our first megastructure, the particle accelerator. This isn't all that important in the long run, but for right now, it's actually pretty good. It gives you a bit of extra research and it buffs the shields of all of your ships. But that extra research actually doubles the amount of physics research we're getting because we weren't doing all that much with our limited number of research labs. So things like this will really help us keep up with the other players. If we didn't have the Gigastructural Engineering mod, I think this whole one planet challenge would be a lot harder, even if you still could start with this whole Birch World overpowered quote unquote planet setup. And now it's time for the moment you've all been waiting for. We have finally reached 100 pop, meaning we can build a district, one of our special districts. You can also see we've got a very high level governor working in the Birch World there, probably helping. Now we have to decide which one we're going to make. The one on the right produces food, which is quite interesting, but it also costs in upkeep a bunch of these strategic resources. We can produce a smaller amount of those resources from the yellow district here, the more industrial one. So that's what I'm going to go for first, since this makes a bit more sense for sustainability in the long run. We'll get that going. Once it's ready, it's going to destroy our economy. You can see at the top now, we are hemorrhaging money and minerals, and we've lost all of our admin capacity. That's because when we add this new district, it adds like a hundred extra jobs to the pool and all of the people are deciding which jobs they're going to take and assigning themselves to things. And as it happens, we end up with much less production and many of them are going into things like research or the production of exotic materials that we don't need quite so much. So I'm going to do a bunch of micro to try and work this out until we get way more population. This is going to be an issue. A lot of the jobs on the Birch World will not be done. So we're certainly getting nowhere near our potential here. At least the immigration plan is still going pretty good. We're at like triple the normal growth rate at the moment. We're getting people quite fast. There was one thing though that I had totally forgotten about and eventually came to remember, and that is that we can increase our population growth using robotics. I eventually did build the manufacturing center. So this adds another two growth on top of our 10 that we had before. Just that little edge that will help us get some extra workers. And we have loads of low level positions in the Birch world that aren't all that important to fill, but do give us useful things like energy credits. So the robots can do that stuff. Now, while we aren't quite ready to make our orchard complex, near the orchard complex, there's this orbital ecosystem megastructure ruin, and we have the tech to repair this thing. So we're going to do it. All it does is, like the particle accelerator, give you a boost to research, this time to societal research. It's not that big in the grand scheme of things, but it's pretty big for us now because we don't have anything else really generating that research. So that's handy. As for the problem of us constantly running out of wallet space, I'm going to make this containment silo thing. It's a big building in space that you can put your stuff in. You might think we have plenty of space inside the Birch world, but apparently not, I suppose. So that will help us out. And now, shortly after, we actually can build another district in the Birch world, not because we've got the pop for it, but because there's one tech in the tree somewhere that adds one district to every planet. And that happens to include the Birch world. So that's a cheeky one to get. Although I'm actually not going to build it, because if I do, I'll have so many open jobs that I think the economy might go out of control. So I just waited on that. Now take a look at this. We have completed our own giant weird black hole claw teleport thing. This project thing is not related to that. So with this, we can do a little bit of 
teleportation. And it proves to be a little bit more useful than I thought. I figured you'd use this thing to just jump around the map, which doesn't really do anything for us at the moment. But actually, you can use it to jump off the map. So I've now sent a science ship and a construction ship to go sit next to it. You can bring up this menu, and then you pay to send them somewhere. But if you pick the cohesive stars option there, it mentions you're being sent to new uncharted star systems outside of the galaxy, which sounds more useful than just jumping to a random point and having to fly back, I suppose. Maybe you could use this to theoretically colonize somewhere that's on the other side of a faction that's closed their borders to you, something like that. But we're quite well liked, so we can colonize wherever we want, and colonization doesn't really help us very much due to our not using of planets. Anyway, that device creates a wormhole, and our ships go through it. Then I didn't click on the go to event button, so I had to work out where they'd actually gone. I eventually spotted it's down here in the corner. So we've got this new system that's not at all connected to the rest of the galaxy. That might be handy for various things. And it's also a pretty good system, it has a bunch of research we can gain from it. It's got this primordial jewel, which doesn't do anything by the looks of things. Turns out it does do something, but it's not anything particularly useful. We'll get to that once something happens with it. For now, I first thought I needed to survey this system so that we could claim it for our own. But I didn't really realize we've already claimed it. It comes pre-surveyed and pre-claimed, so this is just our territory now. We can build a bunch of stuff, and then these ships are just kind of here. We can't go back, so they'll just live there outside of the galaxy for a bit. However, that's not the end of the story. Because if you go back to the teleporter with some other ships, you can still jump to the cohesive stars, and there's a certain number you can jump to for each level of the teleporter. Plus, it turns out they're all next to each other. So long story short, what's happening here is, is as you upgrade the teleporter, you get access to a slightly bigger and bigger extra pocket of territory that's split off from the galaxy and you can just sit there in it. It's all generally good territory with a bunch of resources in it. But it also has these primordial stones, which are just a mystery for now. We'll get back to that, as I said. In this case, we do need to now survey the new system that was discovered and claim it as our territory and such. We get a message there saying that someone else has actually built the next level Event Horizon teleporter thing. That someone else, by the way, is the faction that appears to have completely destroyed our rivals, the Uvazavani Other Birds. So while I wasn't paying attention, they just died in some war. That probably helps us out, actually, so now there are even fewer people who might be hostile to us. There's the upgraded version of the teleporter, it's a bit spikier, so we'll want to get ourselves one of those. We don't want to fall behind on something that seems so important. Those other guys actually have some tech, I suppose, on their side. Fortunately, we were only just behind them. I researched and started building it pretty much immediately after this, so we'll catch up soon enough. Now I'm going to take the plunge and build the civilian -y district on the Birch World to start getting it to produce not only food, but research as well to further accelerate our research. Because that's the one thing we need to stay ahead of for everything in this game. It doesn't really matter if we don't build a fleet or we don't build up our planets. If we have tons of research, we can still make very powerful ships as and when we need them, and stay ahead of the Megastructures game, which is what I was most interested in. Here is our freshly upgraded Event Horizon teleporter thing, and a couple of ships are going in right now to see where it goes. I thought it might send us to a different pocket, but as it turns out, when you upgrade this thing it's just extending the same pocket as alluded to earlier. So that's nice and easy, basically we're creating a continuous set of territories over here. It means I don't really need to be sending stuff over here, once you've got one construction ship and one science ship in the pocket. That's all you need, for now at least, so they'll just do their thing over there and we'll unlock a few more territories in the future. Looks like our Federation partner is interested in starting a war with someone. Apparently it's someone equal in strength to us, so that's a bit worrying. They want to impose their ideology on the purplish-greenish faction. It's the faction that is partially in their territory. It's the bit at the top of the screen you can see there. So I guess they got annoyed that... <laughs> This faction has somehow moved in, using a wormhole by the looks of things, and taken a bit of the territory that might naturally be my allies. Anyway, we rejected the call to war because we're pacifists and we're doing something else. I don't really have much of a fleet together, I'm not even using my full naval capacity. Another teleported ship 
ends up being sent to the sustainability initiatives off Galaxy Pocket. That's very useless for us really, because now the ship's just stuck there and we can't do anything at all, so I think I disbanded it in the end. But yes, a few other factions have those pockets now. Here was what I wanted to do with my pocket. We can build a gateway to make an artificial wormhole between the pocket and the galaxy core, so that we can actually use it as if it's connected to our territory, get some of the ships over there that we don't need back, that sort of thing. However, this is where we learn what these primordial megastructures actually do. They block the construction of gateways, so that we can't do precisely what I just said. So there you have it, this area is truly cut off, the stones will stop us from linking us up with this area. Or will they? We'll come back to that in a while. Back at home, I'm now starting to build the Sentry Array. This is the thing I mentioned previously that will give us complete intelligence over the entire galaxy once we finish building it. It takes forever and absolutely loads of resources. But it's just handy to see what ships the other players have and where they are, so we can know what we need to make sure we're keeping up with them. I'm also building the Science Nexus, another megastructure that massively increases your research, both by giving you some research and multiplying your existing research. Here we have another proposal from the Federation. They still want to go to war with those purpley greeny guys. This time the enemy are better than us, so clearly they're building ships or something. They're also in a small federation with the purple faction next to them. So this didn't really seem like a good idea, but while I said no to the war, I did start preparing for it now and moving and building ships, thinking that something might actually happen. We've completed the repairs of that orchard complex. So now we have food production in our faction for the first time. We can get rid of all the food we were buying off the market. That will make things come a bit cheaper, probably anyway, the orchard has a bunch of upkeep as well. And now we have another war proposal. These guys are really set upon declaring this war and this time I said yes, because now I've actually put my fleet in a position to conduct this war, although not completely actually, we're set up to invade the area to our south, but the area to our east, which we'll also be at war with right here isn't too guarded, I've got a heavily upgraded space station blocking the enemy from attacking me, and perhaps more to the point, as far as we can tell they don't have a fleet that faction, so we do just kind of ignore them and that's fine. Here's the main battle, I send my primary fleet to go invade the main target of the war. They also had a fleet but it was split up between a few groups, and the main group was not strong enough to overcome us. We move in with our probably technologically superior ships even if we don't have that many of them and just obliterate various small fleets one by one and we take out all of their decent looking space stations as well easy peasy really this is a classic case where we're going to do all of the war despite it being our allies idea our allies did send a few weak fleets to help out but really it was just us we rampage forwards and while resistance is put up it doesn't last long so here's us taking out another remnant of the enemy's fleet. And that's pretty much going to be the war won, but the annoying thing about this game is that to completely win a war, you have to go around and occupy all of the enemy's territories. So we get some war score for taking out the fleets, but not enough. Then we spend a very long time gradually taking all of their territory by microing our ships around, so we can skip over most of that. Here you can see we've taken over most stuff. Now we need to also up our war score by taking their planets. For this I've deployed an army of xenomorphs, we're not going to dirty our feathers with war, we're pacifists, so we've just genetically engineered some kind of monstrous creatures, we just drop them onto enemy planets and watch as they annihilate everything causing tons of collateral damage as well, that's all good. This causes the planets to surrender, increasing our war score further. So again, we just have to do that to a whole bunch of planets to get more occupation points. And eventually, the enemy alliance will give up and we win the war, nice and simple. Not much happens at first, it breaks up their alliance, which is handy, but no one actually gains any territory from this. It seems neither of us on our side had actually made any territorial claims. So it kind of looks like nothing happens after the war, we just killed them and now we're going home. But now they have our ideology, whatever that means, they like us a lot more, and I noticed they're not that far off from wanting to join our federation. So I sent an envoy to try and make them like us a bit more, and indeed they started asking to join, 
I said yes, and my partner voted yes as well, despite apparently hating these guys. So there we go, the war did result in something happening for us, we've gained a new member of our Let's Save the Galaxy alliance, which also helps us not just with saving the galaxy, but with keeping the peace in the galaxy, because now our alliance is pretty strong, it's unlikely that any of the other factions will really want to declare war on us, although my federation partners may want to declare war on them because they're not pacifist, so we'll probably get drawn into more war, but anyway. That's the end of this part, we have shot through the game in this series, we're more than halfway to the end of the game. That means we're actually already approaching the end game crisis events that we'll need to deal with. I think they start happening, or can start happening, roughly after 2400 in the game, but it's kind of random when it will all actually occur. So all we need to do is get as ready as possible for that, gather up as many alloys as we can to build a whole bunch of battleships, prepare a whole load of strong points by upgrading space stations at key locations, both to fight the enemy and to use as bases to help us move around fighting the enemy. And we can also constantly buff our ships while we wait by using our very high amounts of physics research to constantly get the shield and laser upgrades which come from that tree, and they're repeatable, so you just keep getting stronger and stronger as your research progresses, meaning we'll want to get that science nexus up and running and keep doing that. There's also a whole bunch of empty territory that we can continue to claim for no good reason. I did mention earlier this sort of holds us back because it's stopping the other factions from claiming it and they might make better use of it, but then again it's the AI, who knows if they'll do anything good with those planets. Maybe it's fine to leave the planets untouched, just so that I can determine what ships go there and stuff more easily. We'll see. Anyway, so join me for part 3 where I'll comment on any further particularly interesting preparations we make, and I suppose get towards something major actually happening. Well, if we're lucky.